here in a moment, all I want to have you pay attention to is the very bottom of the screen in the area which now says, watch this. You're going to see the approximate times for Bettsville and Seneca County, Ohio, of the start of the eclipse, the totality of the eclipse, and the end of the eclipse. So that's all we're hoping to show right here. Hang on just a moment. There we go. Right above the WTOL in purple, over to the left, you'll see eclipse begins at 1.56 p.m. Approximately. In the center there, as it says, maximum eclipse at 3.13 in the afternoon, Eastern Time. That's in the Toledo, Ohio, Northwest Ohio, Bettsville and Seneca, Ohio, will be totality at about 3.13. So you're going to be wanting to be ready a little before 3 o'clock and about 3.13 is totality and the complete darkness coming back to light will finish at about 4.26, call it 4.30 p.m. Monday, April 8th. Very interesting indeed. And remember, that moment of totality only lasts a few minutes in your location. Well, as you've heard over the past 30 minutes, this total solar eclipse is a big deal. People from all across the globe are flocking to Northwest Ohio for a glimpse of what to see. Ryan Lusheen shows us how local businesses are getting ready. We've trimmed out that period, that part of the clip, because you've seen and heard about all the businesses and schools and such are repairing. So let's get back to action here. Well, if you're looking to get out and enjoy the view, all while taking in some of the best outdoor areas Northwest Ohio has to offer, Metro Parks Toledo could be a good spot. Meteorologist Kaylee Bowers takes us there. We have to come to the experts here at the Metro Parks. Amanda's joined with me. Tell me what and we're going to trim out this portion. This portion here is definitely the most important. Have yourself and your friends, and especially your family and your children, wear a well of this portion. Well, the total solar eclipse is going to go down as one of the most memorable experiences in Northwest Ohio for years to come. But looking directly at the sun, even during an eclipse, can do some serious damage to your eyes. Meteorologist Matt Willoughby breaks down what doctors recommend when it comes to proper eye protection. A good pair of glasses here that should work. Solar eclipse glasses are essential for viewing this year's once-in-a-lifetime event. While it's a fantastic opportunity to observe one of the most dramatic astronomical events you can witness from Earth, it's important that one does so safely. The reason it's real important to go to an accredited site and is that unfortunately unscrupulous vendors have been selling eclipse glasses or labeled as eclipse glasses with ISO labeling that have not been certified or vetted. The proper glasses used during an eclipse should appear to be a pitch black while wearing them. If you see through them, they may be a faulty pair. Glasses we would use to view an eclipse are several thousand times darker or stronger than your regular sunglasses. So you don't want to wear regular sunglasses or even several pairs of regular sunglasses aren't going to do what an ISO certified eclipse glasses or viewer will do. Getting the best look at the solar eclipse is a dream for many across the country. So sticking with the preferred pair is the safest choice. You also don't want to look at an eclipse or view an eclipse through a lens like a binocular or a camera with eclipse glasses even on. Uh, to do that, photographers use special filters on the outside of the lens when they're photographing or viewing uh, through binoculars or cameras or things like that. Our next step was testing to see if any glasses were ISO certified and to see if any weren't to use. Look specifically at the filters. So you want to make sure that there's no space between the filter and the side or the frame itself. You want to make sure there's no scratches and no perforations. And then when you put them on, you should have a comfortable view of the sun and what you're looking at. If it feels bright, uh, if it looks blurry or uncomfortable, uh, stop viewing and don't use those glasses. Get another pair. Well, from the end of the world to a sign from the gods, eclipses have a history of sparking conversations 
rumors, and myths. At this point, this can be the end of our information to you about the total solar eclipse. The balance of this, if you choose to watch it, is just some additional information, but not necessarily important information. Good viewing! You may already understand that there are different types of eclipses. Here's some information on any total solar eclipse that has been experienced in Ohio, specifically in our area and for Ohio. So we did see that one in 2017. But that wasn't so, here in Ohio. Yep, we got the graph before you right here, actually. So that last time uh, we did see that last eclipse was in 1806 in Ohio. In Ohio, yes. Yes. And the next one will be in 2099. So you may, may have to do a little bit of time traveling uh, uh, as well. So we do have a little bit some more dates as well. Um, so or at least more cities that will be in that uh, totality in time. You know, we got two minutes and six seconds for mommy. This is throughout the Toledo Metro. Uh, and some of those times, most areas in throughout the Toledo Metro will be anywhere. And these are just some additional cities in Northwest Ohio with times. And as I just mentioned a few seconds ago, the balance of this clip is not necessarily important or need to know information, but kind of intriguing information. Cities that we just showed, um, the max one being Forest, Ohio, Finley at three minutes and 44 seconds. Very interesting there. Well, throughout history, there have been many explanations, superstitions, all about eclipses. Meteorologist John Birchfield takes a look back in time. We're going to talk a little bit more about the history as opposed to the science, how different cultures explain the eclipse, in particular delving into the history, the mythology, and the folklore surrounding the total solar eclipse, and sort of break down how each culture appropriated the eclipse and tried to explain the science before the scientific understanding was really developed and we really reached that modern level of science. So let's break down some of the information here on the history and the mythology surrounding the total solar eclipse and history by out there may find some of this information very, very interesting. Now, throughout human history, the prediction of eclipses has been something that is very common. And in fact, many ancient societies, even BC era, were still doing a pretty good job of predicting the eclipse. Essentially, they observed that it occurred in regular intervals, and they divided the amount of time between eclipses and extrapolated that information to say, hey, if it happened this long ago, here's what we can expect in the future. So prediction was actually fairly accurate given the lack of scientific understanding, but the cause is something that was still unknown and remained unknown until relatively modern history. Now, each society had a very different explanation for the cause of the eclipse, so let's delve into some of the first a recorded observation of the total solar eclipse dating well back before Christ 2159 BC all the way to 1948 BC those were some of the earliest references in mythology in particular Chinese astronomers mentioned the total solar eclipse well into the BC era they did attempt to predict the eclipse with some degree of accuracy but of course some of those primitive very early eclipse predictions not quite as accurate as they became over the years now starting in 770 2 BC, the Chinese cultures actually recorded the eclipses in writing on animal bone, and some of those still survive today, so you can actually look back at those records and see some of the observations that were occurring at that time. Now, predicting the eclipse was a goal of many early cultures, including the Babylonians, which also predicted the eclipse as early as 750 BC. So the Chinese were first, but the Babylonians had a little bit more success in predicting the eclipse, and they actually used a formula, and that was based on the observations of when those eclipses occurred. Essentially what they did is they added 18 years and 11 and 3 quarters days, and they determined, hey, that is when the next total solar eclipse is going to 
occur. And generally speaking, that formula actually fared pretty well. Now, of course, it took many generations of observations with these eclipses being spaced out by so many years. So a lot of this was written history that was passed on from generation to generation of scientists. And then they employed that formula to extrapolate and predict to the future. Now, on the other side of the ocean, there were predictions being made as well. In Mexico and Central America, the Mayans were among the first to mention the total solar eclipse. And not only did they mention it, but they recorded it in books. Only around four of those have survived the test of time, and that is because of Spanish conquistadors that burned many of those books due to the superstitious connotations with the eclipse. Not only did the Mayans observe the eclipse, but they also created a number of different theories, many of which involved superstition and religion surrounding why the eclipse was occurring. Meteorologist John Birchfield diving deep into that one. I certainly hope you learned something new. Speaking of recording, this is pretty close to the time for total solar eclipse. But you've got until April 12th at roughly midnight the following Friday, April 12th, to create yourself an account and do your own recording for future generations. Yes, literally, generations. Your children, grandchildren, and as I just said, generations. Create your account with PictureYourselfRemembered.com. Create an account and upload your experiences. Still shots, photographs, handwritten letters, video clips, and more. Meteorologist John Birchfield diving deep into that one. I certainly hope you learned something new. Well, experiencing the total solar eclipse is something you're going to remember. But you may want to snap a photo of it so you can cherish the moment. But before you do that, meteorologist Kaylee Bowers shows us some important things to know so you don't ruin your phone or your camera. Taking those pictures on your camera, very important. So, of course, we came to the experts here at Cone Camera. With me, we have Preston. Preston, thanks for having us. And just talk a little bit about, like, having to protect your camera and what are some things you need to do. Yeah, so it's really important to protect your camera during the eclipse because there's a lot of light coming from the sun, and it could really damage your camera. Uh, for the sake of example, I did this the other day where we had a roll of film, and this is what happened after five seconds of exposure to the sun. Very quick, imagine this is your camera, not good. We don't want that to happen. So it's really important that you use specifically solar filters. These filters are designed specifically for photographing the sun, and they are different than neutral density filters that most photographers are used to, and that these are about twice as dark. They're extremely dark, and not only do they filter out a lot of light, but they're also filtering out UV light, and in some cases, ultraviolet light too. Um, this is probably the most important step you can take when you're protecting your camera, um, and also you want to protect your eyes as well with the fancy glasses. So I'm going to be using this and these filters when I'm photographing the eclipse. Well, keep in mind, you probably won't get a photo that will match anything like the professionals from NASA, so you may just want to take the moment and enjoy it and maybe take a few selfies and capture the faces around instead of looking directly up at that. In wrapping up, you may think, hey, I've seen eclipses before. Well, you want to know the difference between some sorts of eclipses and why this eclipse, April 8th, 2024, in Northwest Ohio, won't be seen again until 2099. Yes, the eye, eye protection is one of the most paramount uh, things that you need to be prepared for on April 8th. So if you've lived in Northwest Ohio or Southeast Michigan your whole life, you've experienced an eclipse before, but never one like this. Meteorologist Ryan Weekman shows us why it will be unlike anything that we've ever seen here at home before. For six minutes and 14 seconds today, Wasion was the center of the galaxy. Eclipse chasers came here from California, Mansfield, Cleveland, and as far away as New Mexico. Yeah, just take a little bite out of the sun, or I'm not. WTOL 11 was there on May 10th, 1994, when an annular eclipse moved directly across the country. The peak was in our backyard, with Wasion hosting scientists and astronomy buffs 
from across the country to record the historic event. Other partial eclipse passings happened in 1984, 79, 70, but were far less significant locally than the 1994 annular eclipse. Well worth it, well worth it. Yeah, everybody here I think enjoyed it and had a lot of fun. At its darkest in Toledo, the sun was 89% blocked by the moon. The shadow passed early in the afternoon and air temperature readings dropped by several degrees. Some even reported a noticeable chill feeling in the air. Do you think you remember the 94 eclipse? Well, if your memory's a bit foggy, keep this in mind. There were no other eclipse events that happened in our area between 1994 and the most recent partial eclipse in 2017. April 8th is the date to keep in mind this time around. For those of you who remember the 2017 or 1994 eclipse, this is going to be different. Totally different. The 1994 annular eclipse differs from April's total eclipse in that although the moon does go directly in front of the sun, it's too far away to cover up the entire surface of the sun. The eclipse this time around will be complete darkness. The moon will block out 100% of the sunlight. How about we give you more perspective? This April, to get the same 89% effect that was experienced back in 1994, you would need to move far away from the path of totality, which passes locally, and you can see on the red line here. In fact, you'd have to move all the way to Milwaukee, a 230 mile jump. This is truly a once in a lifetime event and something you've never seen before or will see again around here. Reporting in studio, I'm meteorologist Ryan Weekman. Thanks for watching, and remember, set up your account on PictureYourselfRemembered.com. We certainly hope over the past 60 minutes we have gotten your excitement to a whole new level, and also we've taught you a few things about what to expect with the upcoming total solar eclipse that is going to be occurring coming up here very soon on April 8th. Be sure you have the proper eye protection ready to go, and if you're seeking more information, you could always visit WTOL.com slash solar eclipse, and check out our WTOL 11 YouTube page, a full library and resource of information that is going to get you prepared for this once-in-a-lifetime event. We are so proud of what we've been able to provide so far, and we encourage you to tune in to WTOL 11 all day on April 8th as our coverage will continue for the whole staff here at WTOL 11. Chief Meteorologist Chris Vickers wishing you a happy eclipse. Enjoy.